So before I had an agent, the idea of an agent was like this sort of glowing like spirit <laughs> that I was sort of reaching for in, in the void. Um, you know, everyone is really eager and excited to get an agent. And so I didn't really have a great sense of what agents did, except you needed them to like do stuff. That was sort of what I understood them to do. Um, once I actually got an agent, it turned out that the relationship um, is quite wonderful and, you know, sort of works both ways. I think people often think that like writers need agents, but also agents need writers because that's like where they get their money from. Um, so there's like this really kind of beautiful first symbiosis. Was, when I stepped into the agent's office for the first time, it was my second trip back into publishing because I had started after I graduated from Penn, I, I went and worked for three years as an editorial assistant and assistant editor at Harcourt. And so I had seen the way that books were published from the other side and then left for a long time and then came back to a very different industry um, and where the role of the agent had changed as well. I think from a somewhat more old school version where there was a lot more of the agent takes on a book and sends it out without a whole lot of additional work to one where the relationship was much more symbiotic, where there was much more editorial work, where there was much more of a sense of relationship. Uh, and I think that, well, the first thing that I did was I went to work for, for two agents. Um, I had just finished running a business and was then going back and being an assistant, uh, which was a very different kind of experience, obviously. And uh, the two people were very different in experience and very different in age. And one of the people I was working for was 15 years younger than I was uh, and was very concerned about what would happen the first time he asked me uh, to get a cup of coffee. Um, and I said, well, try and, and see what happens. Um, so, so the first thing that I did when I walked in was I, I went to get coffee. Um, but uh, I'm so glad I asked that question. <laughs> uh, but, but actually, what I found when I started to take people on was that the role of the agent is one of very much a partnership, not a, a boss employee on either side, really, um, which is something I think a little bit different from what I had anticipated. I am uh, certainly a first reader for my clients um, and often a second and third and fourth reader. Um, I've had some books that have taken years to sell uh, and have gone through you know, you have, to, you have to think about the ways that a book can go from being a just miss to getting over the line to, to success. Um, I am a psychiatrist. Um, I am uh, a lawyer. And I am a go-between. And uh, fundamentally, because I have skin in the game, as, as you say, because you know, I don't get paid until my clients get paid, I have great motivation to, um, you know, to, to help them sell. Because fundamentally, after doing all the editorial and creative work and some of the most satisfying pieces of it, my job is to do the business uh, and to make sure that my clients are best taken care of and sell the most copies that they can. Trying to describe the novel was incredibly hard for me for a long time because I didn't understand something really basic that I want to share with you. I thought I had to say something about where the character ended up. I thought that any kind of a description really had to include a lot of plot. And um, it was actually an agent named Marie Lamba who I, I run a space called The Word Studio and sometimes I have people come do workshops and she gave a workshop um, on queries and she said, she didn't put it in this way, but what I took from it was basically it's X plus Y equals question mark. So, you know, X character in Y situation and what's going to happen, right? So you don't actually have to tell what happens. Um, in fact, it's bad to. What you want to do with a query is create a cramp in the stomach. You want to manipulate the reader's physiology to make them want to continue, right? That is your only job with um, your pitch. I'm gonna give you three so. or four um, very short descriptions that I gave to books um, that just give an indication of how it ends up going to editors sometimes. Uh, one uh, I called The Da Vinci Code with Fangs, um, which was an urban fantasy novel, um, but went all over the world and other worlds. 
Um, one is Inglorious Bastards meets Pushkin with a lot of cursing in Yiddish, <laughs> um, which, which became the book The Yid, which just uh, was nominated for the Sammy Rohr Prize in, in, in fiction, which was really cool. Um, and my favorite was a pitch that I gave to editors, which was, it started out in bold letters, this book made six interns cry. <laughs> Which was awesome, uh, and they, they would they would hit me because they were crying so hard at the end of it. Um, uh, in terms of the way things go to marketing and sometimes switch, is that I had a, uh, a an historical novel about um, it set in the court of Henry VIII um, that was pretty dark and 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 pretty grim, uh, and. The editor sent out the, uh, the proposed cover, and I got a text 10 seconds later. I almost was counting down uh, from, from the author saying, I'm having a heart attack. The cover is pink. My book is not fucking pink. <laughs> <laughs> so I leave you with that. What I did write was work unbelievably hard and then start working again unbelievably hard and then start working again unbelievably hard and then start working again unbelievably hard. Um, and what I wish I knew was how that it continues to be hard. Um, I thought that, I don't know, I just thought, I knew that authors have to do a tremendous amount of work and I am doing a tremendous amount of work but to get my book visible. But um, I think there are, there are more disconnects in communication between at least in my experience, um, between the team creating the book and the author, and I wanted to be more integrated into the process, and I have managed to make that happen, but it was painful. So, yeah, I think I had that, that similar experience. I had worked a little bit in publishing, so I thought, oh, I know, I know how this goes, and, and I'm going to be, I'm going to do all the work. I'm ready to do all the work, and when I volunteer to do all the work, my publisher is going to be so thrilled mm -hmm. that um, I'm going to help with this, and and you know, they weren't not happy, but they sort of had their own way of doing things that I, you know, could not really like maneuver my way into. Um, maybe for the best, but um, I felt like it was it was hard to do all the work that I wanted to do for the book. And I think um, next time I will um, sort of reach out more on my own to people that I know in all parts of the book world or just reader, the reader world, and um, start that from the beginning um, of the process. Yeah, I would say, I mean, I think the things that I did write and still do write are that I write all the time, I read all the time, and I research all the time. And I, I truly think that if you are ready um, and you have done enough research to find the right person and to follow their guidelines um, that you will find representation. Like I, I actually think there are a lot of stop gaps and I was very daunted when I started out because I was like, oh, it's this one in a million chance. But then I had a lot of things happen where someone was like, oh, actually this isn't a good fit for me, but I'm forwarding it to my colleague or someone say like, mm -hmm. you know, I love your writing, um, but I think that this is the problem in the book. And so like, I think this is what you should fix. Or, you know, as it happened to me, like I love your writing, but I just think that you can do something bigger, you know? And so I think that really like focusing on your craft is the most important thing and feeling like that is totally there. And then just putting in some like, some hours, like slightly maniacally researching thing, which I just do anyway <laughs> as I have it. So, um, so I, I think that there's um, a, a lot of anxiety about how to sell your book correctly. Um, but if you have a good book and you're a good writer, then the, the selling comes n will come more naturally. Yeah. Um, I think the thing that I did write was, I feel like I've always been like chasing, like, tr like I feel like my journey has been a lot of figuring out what my voice is, which sounds like a really obvious thing and everyone's like, find your voice. But like, when I, even when I got to grad school, like I could write at a certain level, but I didn't exactly know what I was trying to say. And I, um, and once I sort of started read, like reading even more than I was before yeah. and reading genres I never read before and sort of reading, reading more widely, suddenly I, I sort of figured out like the kind of story that, that only I could tell at, in the way that I could tell it. And, that, and then like sort of chasing and pursuing that with like a really single-minded focus. And that was really, once I sort of figured that out, I feel like everything, it, and it didn't, I, 
don't want to say it fell into place because like there's a lot of stuff happening all around there, but like I felt like that was the thing that really got me sort of through that process.